番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますおー Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for the much anticipated sequel film thing for the wonderful Slice of Life series Turmeric Garden. This film called Commando Blood Gory. No, it's it's Tomical Love Story, but I figured I'd have to keep the bit going because why not?、Uh, and also, Commando Blood Gory just sounds like a really fun, campy, like super action packed war movie thing, and I'm I would totally watch that. So, if somebody wants to make a terrible fan film called Commando Blood Gory, please hit me up. I'll, I'll watch that shit and I don't know, I'll, I'll make a video about it. I don't care. Okay, we're here for Tomoko Love Story.、Uh, expectations are pretty much in the title. It's a love story that contains Tomoko, at, probably as the centerpiece of its love story parts of. Things.、Uh, we ended off Tamako Market, the actual show thing, with a kind of a whirlwind finish and a bunch of revelations that kind of none of this needed to happen and it was all sort of for naught and yay!、Um, with some hinty indications that, like, oh, maybe Choi is actually the destined one and I don't really know any of the other stuff. But most importantly, we ended with a, a sequence of solid character moments for. Tomiko for Dara as the mediator for, for all of our characters as the support group and for the overall community of the, the, the shopping arcade as a wonderful community that gets behind people who need it and like supports them and stuff and you know, community and humans and wow. It was really good. I really liked all of Tomiko Love Story. I'm Tomiko Market. So here we are for a movie. It's a Naoko Yamada film. We've watched a couple of those in our time on this channel.、Uh, they are always pretty fucking impressive. And I like to go into them with the, the idea that I'm going to do my best here, but I don't know whether I can do justice to this thing, having not seen it yet.、Uh, and once we do actually see it, I'll probably just be kind of brain melted and not be able to do justice to it. So we're going to try and pick up on the awesomeness and the artistic amazing things that are probably going to be coming at us through the screen. And we're just going to enjoy them as they come.、Uh, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about here. Expectations, Tamako, in a love story. Focus probably on Mochi. Some level of Midori involvement would be cool too. And I don't know how this is going to play out like at all. I don't know what the focus of this film is going to be. I don't know how much time we're going to spend like inside the minds of characters like Mochi, who we understand pretty well because of Market, but like how deep can we go? I don't know. I don't know. But I kind of expect like every emotional moment. That we got throughout the entire run of Tomiko Market to have a corollary or similar level moment inside this compressed film situation to give us a, a clean view of all these characters. One of the things that I find so absolutely stunning about Yamada's films, the ones that are film films,、um, Is the incredible like, depth of character development and, and characterization that occurs in the hour plus, hour and a half、uh, long run of a Yamada film?、Uh, looks at Liz and the Bluebird and just goes, oh, How?、Uh, how do you take minor characters from Hibi K and then turn them into this, this genuinely heartwarming and breaking and amazing story that is entirely conveyed? Through like brilliance. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's beyond me. And so this film may very well be, on, be beyond me, and we can just like kind of gawk at it and be like, that was really good, and I'm happy with that. But we'll try to glean something more from it as well, because that's what we're here for. <sighs> and now I'm stalling,、uh, which is really not a good idea because my schedule's already super ruined for this week, and that's all on me. I fucked up. I'm recording this on Monday instead of Sunday because I fucked up yesterday and woke up at like 3 p.m., and then other things were terrible, and blah. So, I'm watching Tomiko on Monday, and then I'm going to have to move Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust to like somewhere else. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with the rest this week, but we'll figure it out. And we'll, the first thing to do to figure it out is to watch something super wholesome and heartwarming and, and good. So, Tomiko Love Story.、Uh, there's also Dara Chan of the Southern Island, which I have been informed is something that is like five minutes long and I shouldn't watch separately. So, you should watch it before Tomiko Love Story. So, that's what we're going to do right now. So, I have the five minute Dara Chan of the Southern Island. Up and ready to go. I have downloaded both this and the film from the KyoAnyCord、uh, Drive Google thing, which I've linked somewhere else. That's where I got it from. You can find it 
Good job. Okay, Derek Chan of the Southern Island, five minutes short. We'll see if this has any relevance to what's coming or if this is just like a goofy starter thing or kind of like a Pixar short at the beginning of a film sort of situation. That's kind of what I'm expecting here um, that just touches on Dara and the island and island life and stuff uh, before the entire film never touches on that again, probably, is my guess. So let's watch that and see what happened when Dara went home. Beep beep timer. I hope we don't have to do this whole, like, enter thing twice, but we're going to. Almost guaranteed. My tea is too hot. Sucks. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I really hope there's not meant to be sound right now, because I'm not hearing it. Okay, we're good. Oh my god. That's amazing. <laughs> hey. Oh, there's like actually a society. There's, there's a society. Sure. Oh, hey, they're learning to... What? There is teaching them the mochi way. That's great. Matsui. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Dynamic established. True. No. Cool. She does have the dance down. Hey, whoa, what are you saying? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I doubt it. I I don't think so, dude. I don't think they give a fuck. Yep. <laughs> Except Kana, because she wanted a meal. You can always fly back. Oh, okay. So we're it's we're doing some recappy stuff as well. All right. that girl <laughs> ah, I see mm-hmm mm-hmm <laughs> oh the voices Literally the entire plot. Boom. Shakalaka. Hi, hi. Oh, boy. Will she get... Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, right. Gotcha. Momo. Yes. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> block, 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 block.
<laughs> what? <laughs> For some reason, yeah. Is that it? That's that's it, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. That was very fun. All right, that was super fun. Um, good gags, good gags. Great, really concise, like, re-exposition of things that may or may not be relevant to the overall story, but to make you feel like there's some kind of a transition point between the episodic story and then what we're going to get here, and just kind of a bit of a recap of, like, oh, hey, I'm Dara, I'm a bird. Uh, these are two people. I went searching for a bride, found myself in this mochi shop, stayed there, loved the people. And then we get some goofy voices and then some toy stuff. And everybody's like, yeah, I'm sure they're doing okay. I wonder what they're doing now. Transition to movie. Boom. Done. Um, also, really good gag about the, the booby mochi, but they're actually Dara mochi. And then the peach mochi, which is, of course, Momo. And it, it's also her butt because of the, 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 the episode. So some inside jokes, some outside jokes, some just generally overall jokes. Good times. Very fun. Much like... Solid. Let's watch us a fucking movie now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. So now we go from the pure goof to the far less pure goof. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna get now. We're here for the actual film Tomico Love Story. It is. How long is it? It is one minute. One. Blah, blah, blah. It is one minute and eighteen seconds long. Woo! Easy peasy. No, it is one hour and eighteen minutes long. So we're in for a ride. I got nothing. Let's just go for it, okay? Um, actually, I'm going to take a, a second to redo some lighting and then comb my hair because it's getting annoying, and then we'll get going. Okay. All right. Tomiko Love Story. Main feature. Feature film presentation. It's up and ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions. Picture-in-picture -picture version in the description. Timer-based version on the YouTube. You want to sync up your own copy with the timer-based version? That is what it is there for. Get your copy ready because the beep-beep timer to count you down is coming at you right now. Full intro again. Great. Good. Solid. Okay. White filter. Ah. Oh, hey, it's a Yamada. Oh, no. Don't you dare. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, it's that shot. Except a better version. And we're starting with Mochi Perspective. That was in reverse. Star-crossed and yet destined indeed. Hey, you gotta establish that, absolutely. Clunk, waiting for the dink. Dinker right in the head. Or transition to childhood? Yep. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Aha, uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh -huh. 
Yep. Yeah, I think some people have noticed, Mochi. That whole montage was the greatest thing I have ever seen. Ever. Mmm. Using that harp. That harp moment, that's so smart. Okay, okay. Center everything around that line. Yeah. Dude, I love this. I I love the character introduction frames. Yes. Fuck yeah. Hey, all right. Anko into Midori, Kana. Then we hit Shiori. Boom. Do we need anybody else? Don't think so. Oh, this is the song. <sighs> <laughs> this is the song <laughs> this is already such a good film just just the openings of it i'm so impressed i was so impressed that opening sequence clearly demonstrating falling in love with tamako over childhood into present And we're going nuts with the camera motions all over the place. It's insane. True. I wonder if that has any metaphorical meanings. Sakiyama Marching Festival. What? I gladly accept. Mata! I love you, Kana. Kana is best. Kana is best person. <laughs> sure, sure, but no. That is such a strange bag thing. Mozu, mozu. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Mm. Are they in their final year at this point? <laughs> hey. I mean, sure.
<laughs> Who are you, by the way? Miss Green over there? I don't I don't know you. Yeah, big time. Again, wonder if there's metaphorical meaning. I'm going to write that down. Catches. Hmm? Hmm. Ooh. Okay. What? Are you... Why are you... Okay. <laughs> Matori's just fucking panicking over there. Oh my god, what is this? Oh, this must be Mochi because he does the film club stuff, right? What the fuck are you making, man? What? <laughs> uh huh. Zip. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Okay. Huh? Uh -huh. I don't think anybody's noticed, you know? Tokyo School of Arts. Mm hmm. Okay. Impending conflict. To. To confess your shit to her or to not? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mochi. Yeah, I, I make the mochi. Also, mochi is the only thing in Tomiko's head is something. Uh huh, I hear. Uh huh, I hear. Uh huh, I hear. Uh huh. <laughs> I think Kana can do whatever the fuck she wants, dude. That girl's brilliant. But then you draft. You, you draft architecture. Easy. Ha ha, get over your fear of heights. Ha ha ha, okay. Gosh, the environments, man. Was never the path. Yeah, you are. Yes, you do. I don't know why they said Meme Daifuku, but it was Mame Daifuku. Ah, uh, where's Mr. Silk and Tofu? Hey, hey buddy. Hi, friendo. Wow! <laughs> oh, a different kind of flower. That's a dandelion.
Setting, 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 setting. Snap, 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 snap. Subtle motion, subtle motion. Oh, dude, your model, what are you doing? It's amazing. Oh! Yeah, he's fine. Did it now. Okay. Without the bitter. Yeah, put milk in it. Yeah. Oh, hi, Mochi. Totally different experience walking down this place. What am I love to you? Eh? Ah. Eh? Eh? Ah? Oh, that. Got it. Expectations. Haha, <laughs> nope. Love. <laughs> Wait, what wedding? Is it. What's her name's wedding? The the Usagi Bath lady? Sawada, 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 I don't know. Ooh. Well, here we are. This is what I was waiting for. Do do not do not do it over the phone, regardless of whether it's a cup phone. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Just 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 be sad in the corner. Perfect. Um Well <laughs> All right. And Oh, but she won't. Then I'll tell her everything. Right. Here. Oh shit. The impossible. Do it. You just told yourself you'd do it. Oh, he's going to trip on that train. Oh no. That explains why it was caught. <laughs> we live in the same room. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I guess that does happen. What? <laughs> Throw it back. G give me that back. N nice throw, I guess. <laughs> yep, those will break too. <laughs> Not hungry. Oh no. Sure, you will. <laughs> uh oh. Yep, let's just pretend that that'll work out. Oh, you're going to run into her at the baths. <laughs> it, it's special, man. It means something. So I'm not going to be walking to school with you. Oh. 
Oh no. Mmm. I'm gonna stay for just a second to... Nope, you gonna not drop wisdom to Mochi? Nechan da honto on Nechan. Yep. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Boo mochi. <laughs> Soft is good. <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh. She still might not get it. It's topical, dude. Just tell her you want to touch her boob mochi. <laughs> it's easy. Alright, now we go in stocking. All right, all right. Oh, oh ha. Whatever they think he did, he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Mido's not like that. She's great. <laughs> what a picture of adolescent high school boy friendship. Pretty nailing it. Oh, God. Oof. <laughs> yeah, really putting your heart into that clean in there. All right, Midori's picking up on, on this. Perfect. Hello, Mochi. Hmm. <laughs> What, your total lack of understanding of her? Yep. Completely. Right. Yep. Yeah. Why don't you do something? And now you're just running away. Well, <laughs> poor bastard. Ah, uh, it's better than constantly forever delaying it. Hello. Tomiko! 
<laughs> oh god, don't force it, Mido. That's evil. Oh Jesus. I mean, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Sure, yeah, huh. That's not terrifying at all. Now you get time to, to anticipate it and chicken out. Whoa-oh. Whoa-oh. And Mido, yeah. Just a little. Oh, man. That doesn't help in this particular situation, but she loves you so much, dude. Oh! Ah! <laughs> I don't know, just dying over here, it's fine. Aw, guys. Guys. Yeah. Except that you're leaving for Tokyo. I have no idea what just happened. Okay. I mean, I, I have an idea. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, buddy. Here we go. This is... Definitely not like twenty five minutes into the into the movie, and we're looking at a confession and like figuring everything out. So that's not gonna happen. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. <laughs> oh no. Well, it is, but not that mochi. There it is. Hey, flashy backy. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> She's just so in her own head, man. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God, no! Ay, yeah, yeah. Yo. <laughs> Are we going to do a scare repeat? Mm hmm. It's got a little bit of lumpiness to it, yeah. No, Tom, I go. People love you. I would, dude. Oh, no. Oh, shit. And entirely linked in your mind to your mother. Yeah, face to face. Yeah.
And that's how he feels about her. I think you already are, Tomiko! Ah! <sighs> Holy shit! And this time over she goes. There we go. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Complete shock. Yeah, full shock. Okay. E er, e er, how do I walking? You said much obliged, which is a weird response, but that's great. Yep, blurs and lights and shit. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The squelch sounds of the shoes. Excellent. Oh. Blink, blink. Okay. It <laughs> yeah. yeah. I close that window. Whoop. <laughs> um. I love that transition so much. Holy shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mochi mochi, mochi mochi mochi. Mochi mochi mochi, mochi zo, mochi mochi. Mochi 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 zo. <laughs> Gochi so? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Delayed response. It, it had just, it was never anywhere in her brain space. She's so oblivious, and then suddenly, like, everything changes. Oh, Tomiko. And now Mochi's just got to be dying over here. Poor bastard. Just laid it all out and she ran away. Uh, <laughs> ah. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Solid. Good. Good. It's about right. <laughs> Dented cups. And it's raining. You can't really use the cup phones. <laughs> he can't stop. Oh my god. What is it with you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Toddle, tot, 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 tot. Scoop. Smack. Bye bye. Bye bye. I don't know. I didn't see it. No oh, shit. I have no idea what that is. Eh, clunk. <laughs> Best person. <laughs> I wonder if that has any other relevance. Maybe that Tomiko is a little bit imbalanced at the moment. Alright, you're getting real specific with it all. Oh no! <laughs> uh-huh. Uh -huh. oh, bye. <laughs> oh no, now we're just in the awkward zone. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, it's so awkward. Oh. <laughs> what? No. Uh huh. Sure. Mmm. <laughs> <gasps> oh, God. Nice. Hmm. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Indeed. Indeed. You fucking did not. <laughs> Something like that, let's say. 
Seriously? I believe it. <laughs> That's not quite it, but... What? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Basically. And we're turning it into what made you like mochi. <laughs> did it. Did did it now. Feel like you've been reading too much manga. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Mm hmm. Hmm. But why? Oh. Oh. She spoke. We don't normally get that. This is true. Yeah. Ballot's point. Nice. A. Not quite. We'll get there. Practice. Okay. Or not. That's not good. Oh, hi! Yeah. Is that the marriage? Is that the wedding? Aw. Little burst of goodness. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, back to Tomiko-ness. Skipping along. All right, all right, all right. What's gonna ruin it? Eight. Oh, no. Ah. If. Up. You don't, you don't just do it immediately. What? What? We didn't run into Sairi? Oh, God. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. I love you, Tomiko. Oh, that is a deeply starry night.
Hmm. I think she needs to... Everyone's starting to open up early, early. Oh, hi. Oh, hey. Get it, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are you about to... Okay, okay, okay. I'll go instead, yeah. What's well, not nothing? Yes! Yeah, buddy! Yeah! Fuck yeah! <laughs> it's still R, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Practically siblings. Mm-hmm. So is she. Mm.
<laughs> oh no. Oh. Oh, it's so depressing. She needs to practice, man. She wants to be active and do stuff. Oh, hi, Shiori. We haven't really seen you around a lot. Cool. Looking up to Shiori in this moment, seeing someone confident and driven with a path, divide between them. Nope, not quite. <laughs> but she gave me a different perspective. Fuck, this film is so goddamn good. Just do it. <laughs> Swoosh. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. All right, go ahead, Chong. Oh, hi. Join us. Hmm. Everything. Always, yes. Dad song? Yeah. Peek out the window. <laughs> it is. It is. Well, I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> Peking. Yeah, buddy. Oh, God. Ooh, uh, that's a good place to go. Not going in? You need that wisdom right now. 
I don't know what kind of wisdom you're going to get, but you need it. What a good line. True? For trying something difficult, maybe failing, maybe getting rejected, and so he chooses not to put the sugar in it and takes it black? Yeah! Give me the pain. Sure. Damn right. Don't wallow in it, but accept it. Find the rock? Go find the, the rock that she dropped? No? Okay. What's that? Oh. Hug. Snaps into the moment. Good shit, man. Damn it. I wonder who else has done anything like that in recent events. Nobody. We're okay. We're okay. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> Fuck it, get, 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 get off here and just like bottle bottle service. She just looked at much as I didn't. Yeah. All right, mom. I see you. I see you, mom. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you will not. You're getting dragged away. Let's go. <gasps> Michiko, you're the best. Besides Kana. She knows. <laughs> knows exactly what she was just doing. a lot real fast no no not that hit up no you can't you can try you can certainly try and giving the opportunity to like try to not not mochi
Back to the way things were, eh? Not quite. Ugh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, it works on so many layers. <laughs> they exist. Fuck. Ooh. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> what? No. Oh shit. Yeah. Wow, they actually told everybody. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Cause it freaked everything out. And he's scared that that'll screw everything up, but then she actually likes him and it's really difficult. Yeah. The answer is I don't actually want to forget about it because it was pretty cool. It's just a lot. It's like a lot. All right, so she's drawing out the little cute mochi thing that is mochi. Oh, dude. Oh, come on. Oh, God. How do you unawkward this? It wasn't your dad. Yeah. 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 He was always the mochi. He was the mochi in your heart all along. Mm -hmm. Ugh, God. Please, no. Whoosh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just straight up from the floor. Oh, by the way. Oh, yes. The true... No, it's just Kana's romance. Of course. That could work. I figure Tomoko will find her own way. Oh, God, please, no. Let's not heist this shit. Oh, God. Oh, there are so many ways for this to go wrong. Whoa. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> um that was totally inconspicuous. He did it though. I know, right? Yeah. Just a little oh fuck, I actually did it. Oh god. A little bit of respect. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, wow. The mask is back on. Ow. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon, dude. <laughs> Grandfather literally just went to the hospital. Don't do that. Hey. Aren't we all? Hey, cool. Q 
cute as hell. There's a B-side! Oh my god, their whole thing worked out the same kind of way. Holy shit. There's another song. Oh. It's... It's just Twinkle Twinkle? No, it's not. Just like you. But it's the meaning of it that matters. It's real. Ow. It's super off key. <laughs> but it's so heartfelt. Okay. So you're going to make something of your own to give to him to explain your feelings that won't be a song but will be something else and probably a mochi of some kind? Yeah, she's back. Easy peasy. Yeah, so glad to be back. And decided on some level. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Has to do with other things. Yeah. <sighs> oh, no. Uh-huh. Mochi. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That's us! That is we! One, two, three, four, twirl, 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 twirl. Wow, these are so great. That's so great looking. <laughs> Hey, we did it. We cut the thing. Now we just have the main conflict to deal with. Oh, God. Oh, no. <sighs> no, fuck. God damn it. No, shit. Yes, okay, thank you. Whew. Close one.
She stole them from... Oh, you're the best! No, 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 no. Yeah. They're the only ones that'll do. What do you want them for? Why do you want them? I don't understand. Let's go. Okay, it doesn't matter. Do it. Whatever it is. Is this gonna be, like, a hypercute confession situation that she ends up doing here? I, it is. It totally is. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. This is gonna be amazing. I believe in you, Tomiko. You can do it. Yep, terrifying, terrifying. Ah, okay. Airport run, right now, let's go. Airport run. Train station run. Serious, big time thank you. That that must have been difficult, but let's go! Oh, we just changed animation styles. Or not. Hi, Connor. <laughs> just the force... You evil, but I'm here for it. Indeed, exactly. Could not put it better myself, Kana. Good shit. What? Hey? What? But you hate heights. <laughs> but you hate heights, Kana. So wide and free. Yeah. Yeah. And you Naruto run it up, Kana. <laughs> Whoa. Did not expect. Totally unexpected. Hello, Mochi. Let's do this. Let's go. Tabako! He's right there. Go! Oh, spinning shot. Oh, it's that It's that guy's spinning shot. Yep. Running time, running time, running time. God, fuck, shit. God, oh, no. It's just like the ending with the Dara and the paths cross. Uh, oh, God. Ah! <laughs> Elevating the tension as much as we can. It's doing great. Why are we climbing this tree? No reason. Okay. Just overcoming something. Come on, last minute. Hi. What? <laughs> Ha! 
Ja. <lacht> ja. Give it to him. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, no, not both of them. Only one. <laughs> throw, throw one back. Throw, throw one back. Yeah. And she'll catch it for realsies, or it'll be a joke and it'll hit her in the head. Either way works. She actually fucking caught it. Holy shit. It's glorious. Now we confess our feelings through the cup phones, even though we can see each other and hear each other. That's the end, right? That's full end film. We're hard, hard, hard to credits right now. God, ah, fuck. Okay. We don't have to be. Oh, uh, yes. Good. Perfect. Fuck me, Yamada. Oh, beautifully done. Straight fucking forward, too. Her version of the song, man. Oh! It's so good. I say that was an excellent film. I say that was an excellent film.
What a powerfully, like, clean love story. But, like, I, I don't know how to, how to explain why I feel this way, because obviously there's lots of, of personality and lots of character in these characters that, that fall in love, but the core of this story is just as simple as it could possibly be, right? Two, two, two kids kind of have feelings for each other. They don't know how to deal with it. One of them confesses. It gets real awkward. The other one tries to figure out what to do. Through the support of her friends, is able to figure some of it out. And does it. Right? That's as simple as it could possibly be. Hell, I mean, Romeo and Juliet is like the prototypical love story, right? And it's got all the layers of familial hatred and, and like, midnight trysts and then the eventual ending and the self-murder and the confusion and all that shit. This doesn't have any baggage. It's just, it's just the characters falling in love and, and, and getting real confused and dealing with all that shit. Strung together with brilliant humor all the way through. Excellent cinematography and just put togetherness. Really fun cuts where they're necessary. Really dramatic and solidly dramatic framing. Enough context and like subtext and layered stuff to give us a pretty fucking full picture of the entire relationship between Mochi and Tamako, but also like the relationship that took us 12 episodes to actually establish effectively between Tamako and the town and the townspeople. And then and then to do what the show also did effectively, which was to establish that that relationship is in reality a relationship between Tamako and her late mother, and her relationship to Mochi is also intertwined with her relationship with Tamako's late mother. And then the song by Mama Dai, which was a core plot point of the show itself, gets one-upped by the fact that Hirako wrote a response song, which was actually just Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and really terrible, but it doesn't matter because it landed. And the fact that there's this symbolic subplot about Tamako's inability to catch things, which symbolize generally the feelings of other people, and then she finally figures out how to do it again through the support and, and like, respect of her friends and stuff, and is finally able to, one, catch the baton doing the thing that she cares about specifically for her, and two, catch the cup doing the thing that enables her to actually communicate her feelings to Mochizo. What? How do you put extra stuff like that on top of a simple love story without it becoming baggage on the love story and instead, like, elevating the thing? I don't know, but it was just done. We just watched it for an hour and 18 minutes, and I am utterly baffled because it was amazing. Other things. Okay, when when we watch Liz and the Bluebird after Hebe-K, you go immediately, the first thing that you notice is that there's a dramatic style shift. Everything is drawn different, all the characters look different, everything is different. And that style shift helps separate Liz and the Bluebird thematically from the story that it, that it originates from, or that the world story that it's within. Tomoko love story doesn't do that um there are there's there's a minor stylistic shift but it's mostly i would call it just mostly filmic there's a bit of a white filter over a lot of things a little bit of a, a fuzziness to the lighting which is a little bit more cinema-esque maybe um i don't necessarily love it but it's fine and it works generally our color palette and and like the character designs and coloring of them are identical to market to throughout although i would say that market is a little bit more um, saturated generally, and that's part of what I mean by this like white filter or like fuzziness in color. It's a little less saturated. It's got a little bit more gray value in, in basically everything. And that's, that's it. That's the main difference visually of this film versus the, the show. The other major differences are like we get a lot more moving camera um, stuff. I think I, I'm going to assume that there's one right here looking up at the sky. Yeah, we move up through this. A lot more shots like that where we utilize digital backgrounds to, to their fullest. Um, and we do them all over the place in the opening song situation, across the windows, all that jazz. Yeah. A little bit more of that, a little bit more character animation. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily better than the stuff that's in market. It's just there's more of it because there's more time and money and stuff. But otherwise, it doesn't go crazy above and beyond or crazy separate this story from the others or from what was there before. This is just a, a more in-depth story that still takes place in the same world. And it's perfect for it. It's perfect for it. Ah. <sighs> So 
so now now I'm at the point where I either like go scene by scene through the film and just go like this is really cool and this is really cool. Um, I don't really want to do that because it's not that fun or that useful. Or I could spend some time and try and outline out some thoughts. Or, or I can just talk about some of the things that I really like and eventually end up in a frame-by-frame sort of situation anyway. I don't know how I want to approach this. This is difficult. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna take a break right here. Um, I'm gonna take a break, refresh myself, sip some tea for a little bit, and just sort of let the movie filter into me, because I find that just, like, starting to talk and just sort of blathering isn't always the best way to get your thoughts in order. Makes sense, right? So, give me a minute here. I'm gonna think about Tomical Love Story and maybe skim it a little, just in my own brain space, um, and then try to come at you with a coherent discussion of some si- of some sort, Okay. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Peace. Okay, so the first thing that I'm really trying to do in my own brain space is to try and fit this film into some sort of normative, like, narrative structure. Um, And I think the best way that I can do that is by splitting into three, not necessarily three acts, but three sections, which are then delineated by conversations had between Tomiko and Mochizo. The first major transition point is pretty fucking obvious, and it's our actual confession and the subsequent running through the world which is dissolving in front of her into a cacophony of of lights and and colors and oh god my whole world just shattered and ah and then from that point we have this whole midsection of the film rather fucking large midsection to be honest uh where Tonko is freaking out doesn't know what to do mochi's in turmoil she's in turmoil we could just call this whole section conflict this is where we've got uh all of the Tomiko says Mochizo every time the talks with all of her 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 friends about this and Midori stepping really seriously into the story in order to make something happen um there's also a lot of emphasis during this section on Tomiko's inability to catch the baton and the difficulty doing it. Um, and then we begin to maneuver into into other places uh, once we start once we start like showing Tomiko's confidence in her chosen path being shaken by the revelation of Mochizo's feelings and a lot of shit happens, um, which I think is is most clearly shown to us by the the cut of uh, the cuts of Shiori talking about her own motivations goals etc uh which are real solid and then the the second and major turning point is here um really it's it's the climactic moment the dramatic climax moment it, which has nothing to do with anything and doesn't function as a climax and so that's fine um but it it instills drama into the scene in the same way that being on a suspension bridge instills drama into the scene um there's suddenly something that threatens genuinely threatens the existence of tomiko's family and like the way that everything is currently in the status quo uh and mochi steps up and comes but it's the conversation that they have after all things are basically put to rest uh that serves as our our second major turning point for this the 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 thing itself which is when mochi tells her that she should just forget about it and just like no we'll just go back to normal which of course is crushing because she's just coming to reconcile with those feelings herself and that sends her on her own path which eventually leads her to reveal how how she feels and how this whole situation has gone down with her friends eventually leads to the revelation and the big plot twist here which is that it was in fact mochizo who was speaking to her and so when she says earlier that mochi talked to me and and was there for me when hinako was gone Oh, oh, it's great. And then we maneuver our way into acceptance of inevitability of change. And eventually we gain some confidence from discovering what Hinako did in response to Mamadai's confession, which she obviously reacted to in a similar way and gets that confidence, nails her baton thing, catches the baton and is happy and surprised about it. But most importantly, she is capable at this point of 
if we consider catching as a metaphor, it's, it's the capacity to accept someone else's feelings and understand them, and boom, it happens. It's so simple. And yet, I've just sucked all of the important everything out of the film by laying it out in such a simple way, right? Because there's no way to deal with this. There's no way. There's no way. I can't, I can't analyze this. It's too good. It's too good. But if we frame everything around those two turning points, certain things start to make sense. One of those things is that while, while the final moment and the thing that we're building to at the end of this, of this movie is the confession, the two-way love story confession thing. And so it's technically a love story. It doesn't really function as a love story. It functions as an adolescent crush leading into confession with no with an entirely ambiguous ending as to how things go there's no clean neat wrap it up tie it off with a bow sort of an ending here we don't know how tomiko and mochizo can deal with the fact that he wants to go to tokyo to study film which he's genuinely passionate and cares about and she's absolutely bound to stay in this location and is definitely not leaving how do we deal with that long distance relationship maybe but all of that is left for us to answer in our own brains it doesn't matter because that their relationship is not what the film is about and so tokyo love story is a little bit misleading it's tokyo change story or or uh, tokyo love story tomiko change story sorry uh, tokyo love story is another it's another it's another film um well, that's just tokyo story Tomiko love story is actually Tomiko change story and more than a, even that it's Tomiko it's okay to change story and Tomiko nostalgia is important but nostalgia and change and moving into the future are not necessarily mutually exclusive. This is a film that's like deeply deeply obsessed with nostalgia uh really interested in how characters observe their own pasts and futures. Um, and it, it sits right at this crucial, powerful turning point in late adolescence where these characters are beginning to realize that change is coming at them inevitably. Um, Mochi, for example, realizes in the very beginning of the film that they are aging out and that he's got a path. But he is he is tied by his feelings to Tomiko. And so he's in this terrifying, fleeting moment where he really only has this one chance to actually explain his feelings or or let her know. And if he lets it slip by, it will be gone. Gone, gone. It's a fleeting moment and one that he's been thinking about for years and years and years and hasn't been able to say. It's a story about change, and that becomes extremely obvious, I think, once Mochi actually uh, does his reveal on those, those stepping stones. He does the reveal, and Tomiko's world shatters. Suddenly, the people around her might not be as stable as she thinks. She needs the market. She needs the community. She needs this place, both as a link to her mother and a link to a, a family that she has adopted. Um, all, all of it. She needs that stuff. And she's shaken by the revelation that people around her are changing and that the specifically that the relationship that she has had, the stable, fine, like just friends relationship that she has had for a long, long time with Mochizo has been shaken by this revelation. Everything is in flux and in turmoil and that's where we get t sick tomiko because in in practical terms she might as well be fucking ill her whole way of of approaching the world just got <laughs> destroyed and so she's freaking out she's unable to catch the baton she's can't, she can't do anything oh hmm the sunset hues yeah taking a taking a page from kaon's book I guess Naoko Yamada's own book for this. This is a total random aside as I'm skimming through, but like just the the color tone of the film club room is so on the money afternoon uh, school club. It's got this just that yellow gold vibe of sunset light on everything it has a certain feel to it that is Kon to me. You know, it's it's weird, but it it just grants this sense of 
familiarity and comfort in this environment for Mochi and, and his friends. It's really cool. But then there's, there's something in the way that we contrast Mochi looking at the photos or the videos on his, uh, on his computer and the, the small screen versus like the wide open sky that we get when he goes out for the screaming. And the, the constant, the sort of like looking out into the, uh, out the window into the wide world that is kind of beyond Tamako's window. It's super interesting just visually. Yeah, stuff like this. So Tamako here feels really small, framing wise. And then when she thinks about Mochizo said he's going to, to, to Tokyo for college, we get the dandelions here that end up being the ones that are in her, uh, in her vase at the end. And beyond them, the wide open, terrifyingly open sky. A plant stuck in the ground. And a wide open sky. Hmm. Hmm. Again, framing Mochi with the sky, wide open spaces, and when he go goes for his primal scream, same idea. Yep. And then here around Tamaka, we frame downward. We frame earth, we frame ground, we frame shadow, we frame reflection. And we see the impact of that so powerfully when she starts looking at Shiori, right? Her own friends' goals and, and motivations are suddenly, we're looking up to Shiori, right? She's, she's almost looming above us, far beyond us. And she, too, is framed with the wide open world behind her. She turns into it and hypes herself up and gets it all ready. And then we see this gap, this divide between them. And Tomoko can only look in, at, at her in, in admiration. And so as she continues to consider Mochi and people moving forward and, and leaving her in her small little spot, her small little place on the earth, her thoughts are going up with the contrail, up out into the wild, wide blue yonder. But then as she maneuvers through this familiar location, she sees that Everybody's dealing with something, and that it's not, not a problem. She's not alone. Because everyone, yeah, everyone is dealing with something. It's kind of, it kind of brings me back to like episode two or three or wherever. Everybody loves somebody and that's okay, right? Same deal with Midori. Side note, Midori's gay for Tomiko wasn't, there wasn't enough of it and I'm sad about that. I mean, I'm happy about it because then we don't get to have, we, we don't end up with the baggage of like a love triangle type of situation going on. We as watchers of Tomiko Market before Tomiko Love Story know for certain that that's the case. There's very little that even implies Midori's feelings. Obviously, she cares for Tomiko in the film and there is some struggle in her expressions when she's dealing with the whole Mochi and Tomiko confessing to each other situation, but, uh, not a lot of, not a lot of game Midori. That's okay, though. Uh, regardless, it's, this is a, a story about romance and adolescence, a powerful moment and a turning point, a, a moment of distinctive change, and obviously, I think this is, like, the most obvious thing that you can say about Naoki Mata. She is obsessed, obsessed with fleeting moments of life, uh, of existence. That's what our time on this planet is made up of, is fleeting little moments. And not so much big, dramatic, consequential moments, right? Those aren't really the things that shape us as much as the everyday, day-to-day -day experience and existence of being. The place that we call home, the people that we see on the regular, the places we choose to go and things that we choose to do over years, each moment being fleeting. And so Yamada explores and elevates 
those moments into something more. Yes, these are crucial and important moments for these characters. They're in adolescence. They're in the this sweeping tidal wave of of hormonal and physical and emotional change that is humanity that is going from childhood into not so childhood that is reconciling your nostalgia for childhood loves and your childhood dreams with reality and the difficulty of adulthood and the insanity of love and romance and other people and oh god it's a crucial moment but it's also a moment that all of us can relate to on some level <sighs> And so we, we explore it. We explore it deeply and we explore it well. Moments pass us by, but we can move forward without losing our pasts completely. Right? The fact that things are fleeting is not... It's not a justification for trying to stay rooted where you are. It's a justification for grasping out for as many future moments as you can get. Because you never know, you might be able to catch the cup. Fuck! It's so good! Oh, I didn't even finish my whole, like, mochi point. Um, mochi spends a whole bunch of this, this movie, I mean, not a whole bunch in terms of screen time, but a bunch of scenes that we see of mochi are him just sitting, staring at his computer, staring at little clips of Tomiko. Versus big open sky. His nostalgia is captured on film. He's someone who's almost wallowing in that nostalgia and who sees it as something that's holding him back from moving forward when a reframing of perspective could change that completely. That's so good. It's so smart. It's so fucking smart. Okay. Uh, there are a couple other things that I have specifically written down that I want to talk about in a general sense. Nailing emotional context uh, and micro-expressions. And these two things go hand in hand, and they're just such Yamada-isms. I mean, when Yamada's directing, I just so, I so expect that emotions of characters are going to be clearly conveyed to me. And I also expect, and I'm always awed by how, how far she goes to make it actually happen, expect that character expressions will be the most detailed thing in the film and will have the most thought and stuff put into them. Let me find, I don't know, any scene of this one works. Yeah, this, this one's great. So here we have Midori and Tomiko. They're doing a talking. Micro-expressions in the eyes. Micro-expression of the look down. The power of this cut here that kind of isolates her and corners her and makes her feel like she doesn't have a choice the way she sort of balls her fist up in 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 preparation for what she's about to say doesn't make me happy seeing you stress like this the micro things man uh one of the first things that i wrote down was midori before catch right here as we watch uh, we watch Tamako do a thing and then we watch Midori do a thing and she's clearly watching Tamako as she goes and we focus on Midori as she's making this moment to just feel it, vibe with it and catch it. Like that, that she's confident enough to actually blink here moments before it actually comes down and just grabs it versus Tamako who's smiling and up. But the slight smile on Midori's face that br just breaks into teeth. The micro-expressions, man. There's so much thought put into them. It's so insane. And then there's just... Kana is the greatest? Ka Kana is the greatest. I... There's no... There's no doubt at this point. Not when she does this. Not, not when this is a scene that exists in, in reality. <laughs> Fuck, there are so many scenes. There are so many scenes. There are so many things. And as I'm skimming through this, I'm like, oh yeah, that happened. Like, there was this this whole panic moment when Tomiko unthinkingly reaches out and grabs Midori by the butt, 
absolutely freaking her the fuck out and not understanding the context of what is actually going on here at all. And then this just hilarious sequence as things occur. Ah. Or the fact that Mochi's friends are like legitimate characters and they're pretty cool. And they just, they just want to stand there for him, you know? Okay, again, Sky's career path questionnaires, open sky, terrifying. Gosh. Micro expressions with the legs, framing. Like, I, I, I don't know what to do here because I can just go through the list of, of everything in the movie and just say, I, I think it's really good. Because I think, like, everything in the movie is f fucking really good. But it's more than that. It's that there are scenes in between important scenes that do nothing but add fluff and glory to it and are important for doing that. There are glorious transitions like the one at 3120 when it's raining. Go from that moment. The clouds roll in. They cover the light of the sky. The rain begins. And suddenly we're in an entirely different emotional context than we were just in. That was a transition. We're still in the same scene, but that was a transition. I, I, that's maybe one of my favorite things in the entire film. And that's insane to say because it's such a simple little thing, but it is. That... That emotional transition from Tomiko reeling to aftermath of Tomiko reeling and just kind of. Is amazing. It's amazing. And then there's the whole like tension that I feel that's completely not explicit, but there's this whole tension in those scenes where. Where we have Tamako take a break. You should take a break. You're still sick, right? Just take it easy for a while. But wouldn't want you getting hurt. Oh. Not since Hinako. Not since your mom passed. You haven't taken a break, have you? There's this feeling that I get from this. And it's not explicit, but I'm still going to explain it. Because I, I don't know. It feels like Tamako thinks that she desperately needs the market to remain the way that it is. And a part of that is having the work. I think it's a pretty common trope to like, and I think a common reality to throw yourself into work to avoid thinking about things that are difficult to think about. Um, hey, I've done it a lot. Um, that's the vibe that I get from Tamako. But it's more than that. It's like she's trying to take over her mother's role in the market uh, or, or, or in the, the, the mochi shop in order to prevent her from being gone, right? In order to hold on to that. And in the same way, she needs this work to relate to her mother. She needs the market that she's got as her adopted family. And this moment that she gets to take the break, I don't know, it feels like it's a super struggle for her to say, okay, I will take the break. And then this moment is like being, she's like lost. Where, what do you do? In the early morning. But then she comes to realize that everything continues. Everyone keeps going. Everyone is moving forward. The same as always. Right? It's about motion in the same place. And so she's framed grounded. Casting her baton up to the sky... And can't catch it. Thunk. Ah, oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. And then there's the fucking... I forgot about the opening montage. I need to turn the light on. Hold on. Ugh. Ah. Okay. I forgot about the opening montage. I forgot about... It, it, it tells us the whole story of their lives. In like a minute. Alright, we throw the thing... We enter the thing through the hole, boom, childhood, birth, Hinako, Michiko, early adolescence, being dinguses to each other, 
pulling on her hair, being an asshole. Oh fuck, mom died. <laughs> we are two minutes into the film. Mochi's there. This happened. The introduction of the cups. The balloons. The centerpiece. Growth and development. Little moments. Helping each other out. Seeing each other. And falling in love with her. All in the moment that he is throwing that cup across and waiting to see, oh, will she catch it this time? No. Glimmer, glimmer of lights. And they use a harp, right? <laughs> ah, it's so smart. It's so smart. Uh... The whole OP sequence with the character introduction frames are amazing. And the little, like, it's on film, but then we pull it out of the film and turn it into little paper cutouts that go and meet and fall in love and make a little baby Tomiko. I mean, but not really, but, like, they do. And we end up right here. Another crucial frame that we will see later. God, all of the transitions are so good. All of the Kana is so perfect. Midori is such a good character in this film. Tamako herself is kind of a wet noodle. <laughs> but that's okay, because that's all she needs to be. She's just freaking out because the freak out started. It's totally fine. This film is everything that I wanted and so much more. I need to watch it again because I'm missing so much. It's 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 such a problem when there's an hour and 18 minutes and almost all of it matters. Um, it's such a problem to come out of that and go, uh, so what do I focus on? What mattered there? The answer is all of it. The answer is the entire film. The whole hour and 18 minutes of the entire thing mattered. It was all extraordinarily good. And I'm not good enough to talk about it. Maybe, maybe in a week or two, I'll have some, some thoughts that make sense and like an argument to make about why this film matters. I, it's just so self-evident at this moment that like this story is a good story and the production all around it on every level is excellent. And I love these characters and the world that they inhabit and the reasons that they exist the way that they do. And in general, Yamada's style of telling stories with a purpose and the purpose that's actually being explored here and the, the relationship between this nostalgic love for like a, a home, a, a place that is ours, a childhood that is, or, or, or a place that is steeped in one's own childhood, and then bringing that into conflict with the inevitability of change of that's just a part of the human experience. Fuck. I mean, th this is the kind of animated film that, like Liz and the Bluebird, takes steps beyond being anime to being, like, more than that, to being capital A art or capital L literature. I... Excellence on every level. Excellence on every level. I think this film nails its conflicts, it nails its characters, it nails its beats, it nails the conveyance of emotional context, it nails the angst of being teen, which fucking sucks, uh, and it just, it just nails it. That sequence of Mochi and Tamako sitting next to each other and us fast-forwarding through the class, through the school day, as they very pointedly keep their eyes away from each other. Oh, God. It's just lived experience. It's just real to me. It's just, like, fuck. I, 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 oh, 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 oh. Gosh, back to awkward high school days, man. So right on the money. Or the, the moment when, like, our first move through the market with Tomiko is near the beginning. We get this, this big, 
this big uh, uh, shot here, right? Moving into it and through it and all that jazz. And then later, after she's kind of freaking out about some stuff, she goes back to the market. And it's so... She's so lost, it's so different, and so stilted. It's immediately after she literally drops the baton. Leg focus. I'll be by later. And everything, all of the framing changes, right? We're static stock on Tomiko, just panning by. It's super different until she runs into Sayuri and gets a little bit of a spring to her and has a little bit of that smile going and is back to herself and is doing the skipping and is is got some action and activeness and yeah welcome back and oh god and it all falls down and then we just get the glory of the <laughs> totally automatonako which is just just goofy Or the goofiness of her little legs as she as she brrrts off the first time when he actually confesses. And then the transition of that comedic moment into a genuinely dramatic moment as the world turns into to color around her. <sighs> Nebulous and ambiguous and misunderstood and, and incomprehensible to her because she's just confused. Or the little, little, like, almost, it's almost non-existent moment when she's talking to, uh, to Midori. Mm, again, micro-expressions, the way she's wringing her hands behind her back. Because she's lying. Or this moment, which if we buy into the symbolism of Tamako's inability to catch and her inability to grasp feelings, is Midori literally walking over and putting the feelings into her hand and, and giving her another chance? And then dancing alongside her in order to help teach her? He's lived, yeah, right here. He's lived across the street from me since I was born. On some mochi shot just like mine. He's always... Through good times and bad, he's always been right there. Right? And then we show Midori there, too. She closes her eyes in the moment. Because she was there, too. Unseen. And she comes to accept that in that moment. That's a, a beat. That's like, that's a story point and a character point that is so understated that it's almost unnoticeable. And if you don't have the context of like Midori's interest in Tamako from market, that doesn't exist. That, that doesn't make any sense. But if you do have that context, this sequence is Midori accepting that Mochi, that Tamako has eyes for Mochizo, right? That's... <laughs> One frame, boom, back. And she, being a gloriously good goddamn friend, helps. Just helps. Even if it hurts her. Bitterness is an acquired taste. Regret is worse than not doing something. Reach for the sky. Jump for what you want. Try to catch the baton again. Give love a chance. <laughs> I mean, this is so good. Okay, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting into the, I'm getting into the fuzzy weeds. Everything, man, from the framing to the transitions to the general flow of the film to the balance, the tenuous balance between humor and lightheartedness in a story where our characters are in immense emotional turmoil to a happy but nebulous and ambiguous ending looking toward a future that we can assume whatever we want about. It's fucking perfect. This film is amazing. It's, an, it's a nine plus for me. I don't know if it's a 10. I'm going to have to watch it again to figure that out. But it's a 9 plus. Easy. Um, 
easy. My only concern is like, how do I rate this against something like Liz? Because I think Liz is a better film. Uh, no, I take that back. I don't necessarily think Liz is a better film. I think Liz is a more artistic -y film. And more obviously in the realm of like high art, sort of. But then this is also like, that elevates an anime to that without dramatically changing the aesthetic in the same way. I, I don't know how to reconcile it. Except that I really like it. And I think that's okay for now. And I'll, I'll grow a more mature opinion about this film as time progresses. But damn, what a good one, Naoko Imata. Nailed it. Knocked it out of the park. And it is so obviously her film. So obviously. The, the care and the eye for detail is just so perfect. Ah. Okay. I have to wrap because I'm just going to blather and I'm basically going to say I really like this film in like a dozen different ways and that's probably not the best type of content. So, I've been Tiabu. This has been Tamako Love Story. It was a fantastic film. It is a great leaving point for these characters. I am completely satisfied with the entire Tamako Market Love Story experience and I don't know how I'm going to rate it. It's just not in my brain right now. I, I don't know. It's 9 plus for the film. It's 8.5 plus for the for, for market as a whole. Maybe 8 plus. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> okay, I'm sure that there are about a thousand things that I either missed completely or saw and caught and then it, there's an hour of content to go through and I don't know how to find everything. Um... If you have key points or arguments or things you want to say about this movie or ways that it impacted you or things that it made you think about, ways that it changed you, whatever, please throw them in the comments. I would dr just love to read them. I really would. Beyond that, I hope you've enjoyed this movie as much as I have because I had a really good time with it. And I hope to catch you next week for something different, namely Kyokai no Kanata. See you there. Peace.